Welcome to this morning, this day, and this opportunity to be together in community, which is a time of joy, comfort, and sometimes challenges. This Unitarian Universalist congregation is a place where we come to learn more about being human. We're not here because we figured out life's questions or because we think we've got them right. We come to learn how to be in relationship together, how to listen, how to forgive, how to be vulnerable, and how to create trust and compassion in one another. For those of you who may be visiting with us, and for those who have a deeper tie to this fellowship, we're grateful for this opportunity to share the experience of gathering together for the service and the fellowship time with you. This is a community where we discover relationships with people from different religious tra traditions, different cultural backgrounds, different geographic origins, and from different generations. We seek ways to make meaningful connections and to make meaningful contributions in this chosen community. I'm honored to share the aspirations of our covenant statement. We are travelers. We meet for a moment in this sacred space to love, to share, to serve. Let us use compassion, curiosity, reverence, and respect while seeking our truths. In this way, we will support a just and joyful community, and this moment shall endure. Let us move into our time together this morning, willing to be authentic with each other, honest within ourselves, and opening to connection in all its forms. My name is Sarah Walker, and I'm a member of the board here at QUUF. As we gather, I acknowledge that the water, land, and shorelines here in Port Townsend are the traditional territory of the Sklalem and Chemekin peoples. We honor and acknowledge our indigenous members and neighbors and vow to help restore and sustain these homelands. If you're visiting today, I offer a special welcome and invite you to join us for refreshments and conversation in the fellowship hall after the service. We have a newcomer's table near the patio doors where our greeters are here to answer any questions you might have. Welcome to you all this morning. We're glad you're here. I have some announcements. The portraits in the sanctuary, foyer, and fellowship hall are from an exhibit called Still Here Portraits of the Chemicum. The portraits are a reminder that the Chemicum are not extinct and remain actively among us. They were done by Brian Goodman, a member of the League of Extraordinary Observers. Rosalie Waltz, the tribal chair, will be giving a talk and telling stories on March 30th at 3 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And I know there's more information available in the fellowship hall about this art exhibit. It's time for another selfie slideshow. And uh, we want to see your fabulous faces. So please send photos, either of yourself or with others. Our selfie slideshow will debut on Easter. Optional themes are butterflies, spring, and Easter. The photos should be sent to selfie at QUUF.org no later than March 22nd. Our lovely flower arrangement today was donated by Carmen Meyer and Ev Mullenthaler in gratitude for all the ushers who give their time to volunteer on Sunday mornings. The time is finally here. You can drop off your donations for the great QUF rummage sale this week. Please bring your stuff starting at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, March 12th, and through Friday, March 15th at 3 p.m. 
Friendly volunteers will be available to help you. Please, no clothing or books. And then, come back on Saturday, March 16th, between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. for the great QUUF rummage sale. Find treasures at bargain prices. Tell your friends, support QUUF. Any questions, you can contact Deb Carroll. Now we have a special guest this morning, and Robin, Robin Steeman will introduce her to us. Good morning. I'm Robin Steeman, <laughs> the annual stewardship campaign is a time for us to reflect on our commitment to QUUF and a terrific way to do that is to read the beautiful heartfelt testimonials in the weekly update each week. Those of us on the stewardship team take our responsibilities very seriously. We asked ourselves, how could we get your attention? Do we have to cause a flap? Well, we found someone who knows how to create a big flap. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce Chris Flutterson, this year's stewardship mascot. Chris? Thank you, Robin. Thank you, everyone. Let me take a moment to compose myself. I'm all a flutter. I'm so excited. <laughs> the team asked me to create an event that would be huge, huge. They said, the sky's the limit. <laughs> I've heard there's going to be a brunch. Will there be flapjacks? <laughs> flapjacks? No flapjacks, but we'll have a brunch of Palooza on Sunday, April 7th, after the Sunday service. We'll feast and frolic. Fresh baked goods and gluten-free options, egg, vegetarian, and vegan casseroles, and fresh fruit galore. Chris, how can we get involved? I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> there is a grand bulletin board by the office filled with 62 different tasks, both big and small. This will not be a fly-by-night operation. <laughs> We're asking those who can to please sign up. We'll also have a few surprises, including a raffle and a photo booth. Oh, surprises. That reminds me. Find it here. Reverend Linda gave me something to announce just before I came up. She said it was a big surprise. It says, on April 7th, the Reverend Linda Hart would like us to help her celebrate her 40th year of ministry at Brunchapalooza. <laughs> she started very young. Everyone is invited. Isn't that exciting? Yes, what delightful news. Mark your calendars for when? April 7th. Oh, yes. We'll celebrate <laughs> Linda's 40th year of ministry. We'll feast and we'll turn in our pledge cards to support our beloved QUF. And you know the old saying, the sky's the limit. So inspirational. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. One more time, say it with me. The sky's, sky's the, the limit. limit. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Let us settle our minds and calm our hearts.
my notes seem to have disappeared. Did you take them? No? I look at that. You know, Christina tells me that I should keep things in the book, and now I understand why. I usually bring my own text up with me. Good morning, friends. <laughs> Our opening words are by Kia Kiali uh, Bordner. Come together again. Gather in love. Light the fire of hope. Build the foundation. Commit together again. Gather in truth. Light the fire of freedom. Build the entryways. Continue together again. Gather in community. Light the fire of the future. Build the shelter. It is good to be together this morning. Will you join me in saying our chalice lighting words? Little flame, light the tender kindling of our souls, and soon a roaring blaze shall be of warmth and love and community. From this little spark, may a fire of passion spread from heart to heart and light our way, sweet spirit, and light our way. Let's join in singing our opening hymn, number 347 in the gray hymnal, uh, Gather the Spirit. Uh, I invite you to rise in body or spirit. our time for all ages and so I would invite those uh, young of heart and body and spirit to come forward I think we have a somewhat thin showing this morning but that's okay 
We may be small in number and size, but we are mighty. Right? Come on up, y'all. All right. Okay. Oh, my gosh. So we actually have, let me tell you guys, you don't need to sit down because we have, like, we're doing a little hunt today. There are some things up here in the front of the church that don't usually belong here. And the way that I have done this in the past is I have, um, I always think the kids, that kids, that people need helpers. And so, um, and I usually see if there are any people in the congregation who are willing to help. Is there, is there anyone willing to help out there? To help with the... Y'all. No, no, you don't have to come up. You don't have to come up. You don't have to come up yet. Um, I think we're going to wind up doing it. But who's willing to help? Thank you. Gracious. Thanks, y'all are tough, a tough crowd this morning. So I'm going to just let the moms um, help with um, doing it, unless one of your kids, do you think, would... would have another helper? No, I didn't think so. I was thinking, um, uh, when I have, this is something I have done before, let me just be honest about it. Um, and um, usually there are more kids. So take a look around um, and see if there's some things that we don't usually, you have to get up and walk around. You can't do it sitting because some stuff is kind of hidden. You want to go with mom and look for things? Yeah, go. Go on, it'll be, it'll be fun. Kind of up and around, you can come up here, look all around. Do you see anything that doesn't usually belong, like on the chancel up here? What do you think? Oh, where did that come from? What, do you want to get it and bring it over? Oh, okay, well, all right. So we have, look, we found something. Can we find other things? There, there are like three or four things around. There might be some other things around. Let's see. Okay. Oh my gosh! Where did that come from? Can you? It's, yeah, it's it's crazy. Another thing. My goodness. Okay. Look around. There's there are a few more. There are a couple more things. A couple more things. Can I have that one? I'll take it over. Look. Huh? Who knew? What do you find in there? Okay, some other things. Oh, well, now that's interesting. Yeah, okay. And there's one more. There's at least, there's at least one more thing. <gasps> Can you bring that over to us? Oh, perfection. Oh, bless you. That's so awesome. Thank you. Okay, so we have these things. Now, I will ask for an, a, a volunteer, or maybe two, from the, um, the, from the congregation to come up and help out. Because, you know, it's not put together. We need to put it together. So if you all would help, maybe you guys could help a little too. Maybe if we start with, you have to, I think we have to start with that piece. Maybe. Do you want to put the light bulb in? Here, let's get the light bulb in first. Oh, no, we... Does this go in first? I, it may. All right. Does anyone know how to put one of these together? <laughs> Come on up and help us. <laughs> okay. We're getting there. Yeah, okay. We just have to screw it, turn it around. Are you a lamp expert? No, okay, well, <laughs> that's all right. I think we're going to be able to, oh, 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 there we go. Let's see. Okay, here, she's, she's the lamp expert over there, even, even, if she's, even if she's not. All right, there we go. You what? I missed that. Okay, here we go. That goes down, and then, okay. We screw that on. Thank you. And then, okay, I think we need one more thing. Let me see if I can, because we need to, well, we could just, there's a plug right over there. We could just use that, couldn't we? All right, so who wants to take the lamp over? Can you carry the lamp? Do you want some help? No, okay. All right, I'll just take the lamp over here. And I'll get, um, y'all come on over. All right. 
Let's see if we can make this work. And you can plug it in. And does anybody know how to turn a lamp on? Do you remember how to turn a lamp on? Yes. Oh, God, please. <laughs> oh, man. Ah! Woo! Look what we did. Now, see, this shows you that many hands make light work. <laughs> and for, for those of you who don't know what that means, that's an old saying about how when we work together, things work better. And this is my favorite time for all ages ever. So thank you for putting up with it. All right, thank you all. I, and will the uh, folks on the aisle please rise and make an arch so we can sing our children out. Well, it's hard to follow that. Um, I'm still Robin Steeman, and I've been on the stewardship team since 2001. I was so excited about our developmental work with the Reverend Linda Hart last fall that I stepped up and asked if I could be on the stewardship team and chair the committee. Our team formed, we read books, watched some webinars, and we learned a lot, and we have an exciting message to share. I'm also delighted to announce that we have a special treat for you. There's a display in the foyer of artifacts from the Museum of Stewardship. I created the museum years ago. Here's an artifact, our first cloth napkin. <laughs> It sounds funny, but there was a time when we made a decision. Cloth, paper, did it matter? We chose to have a culture of cloth napkins and, and, and of explicitly caring for the environment. We like justice and we're happy to be explicit about it. We're a welcoming congregation. We've got a rainbow flag, we, I mean a rainbow fence, and we've got a flag flying. We have Black Lives Matter signs and a green sanctuary sign. We also like economic justice, but it's hard to talk about money in our culture. We learned that the UUA's suggested fair share contribution guide is a way for a congregation to explicitly embody economic justice. It's an economic justice tool. A feature of the guide is that it's not just asking people to give, give, give. It's progressive. It starts with 2% and goes up to 10%. It rises with capacity and commitment. It's a suggested guide. It's private. And it factors in a person's personal financial situations, all in three easy steps. This is important. You start with the first side of the sheet where you answer three questions. You answer income, what's your, then the second question is what's your personal financial situation? You can account for any significant situations, for example, large medical bills. And the third thing that you consider is your level of commitment. So please do the worksheet first before you look at the chart. Say, but why can't we just say everybody give three to five percent? That would be fair. But it's really not fair. It's not progressive, and it doesn't account for personal financial situations or diff different levels of commitment. Here's a team. Here's the team with a replica of the prehistoric fair share guide, <laughs> one of the most precious uh, artifacts in the museum. 
exhibit that's here today. You can see that giving according to our means is a tale as old as time. See how it, it's also a progressive guide? It starts with grain and it moves to a duck and then something like an antelope. <laughs> the board and the stewardship team were polled anonymous, anonymously about the fair share guide. 10 checked that they are making fair share pledges Two checked that they're moving toward a fair share pledge, one checked none of the above, and one was not available for the polling. Books say that you inspire with a big vision or an exciting goal, and it's true. Years ago, when we realized we needed more room to welcome people and to live out our mission, we had a successful capital campaign build. Oh, nuts, I forgot to bring up the exhibit. I have a sheet out in the lobby, and honestly, please do check it out. It's this long, and it has every single uh, contribution that was made to the capital campaign. It's on the, in the foyer on the exhibit. Please stop by and check out the exhibits. Congregations with vibrant stewardship are clear about what's needed. If you ask people to just be generous, how would they know what to give? The Fair Share Guide lets people know what their fair share is. We have an opportunity to become a fair share congregation where we ask, what's our fair share? Where we think about giving according to our means and understand that giving more for those who can't is economic justice. We developed a cloth napkin culture, a green sanctuary culture. We could develop a fair share culture and like with the cloth napkins, we'd just do it. It would be part of our culture. We wouldn't talk about it all the time. It just would be. So if we want to live out our mission and do our work, we need to fund it. Becoming a fair share congregation could mean more income. It could help us close the deficit and live out our mission. You'll be getting your packets next Sunday here, or they'll be mailed on the, the following day. We're excited about this message, and as you know, Chris Flutterson says, the sky's the limit. <laughs> and that's our message, and that's the message, but I have one piece of news that's so exciting. But really, don't forget about the message, okay? Do you promise, do you promise not to forget about the message? <laughs> message, okay. A generous group of donors, members, has volunteered to match any pledge increases this year. So if you made a pledge last year and you increase your pledge, that increase will be matched. Not only that, if you get so excited about this match idea that you say to yourself, I'm going to make my pledge and fill out my pledge form, but I want to match even more. You, there's a form in there that says you can make a one-time contribution, and that also will be matched. So what do we think about that, people? Thank you very much. And now we pause for a time of generosity and to receive an offering, which today goes to pet helpers. I would like to invite Lori Riley to come up and tell us about pet helpers. Good morning. Good morning. I'm still giggling about many hands made light work. <laughs> If you have a pet, I bet you really love them, and they really love you. And their presence in your life provides a depth of companionship that's irreplaceable, especially in trying times that give you unconditional love. But imagine if your companion became ill or injured and you couldn't afford veterinary care. 
that happens to too many in our community. Often, someone with limited resources must choose between buying groceries or getting the care they need for their sick pet. Admirably, most would choose the veterinary care. But no one should have to make such choices. Pet Helpers Port Townsend steps up. We originated as a team right here at QUUF and quickly grew beyond these walls. And now we have volunteers from the larger community and we are a 501c3 nonprofit. We provide access to veterinary care for pets of homeless and underfunded people throughout Jefferson and Clallam counties. Pet Helpers is an all-volunteer organization depending entirely on donations and grants. Since our funding in 2021, we've helped hundreds of pets and more requests come in almost every day. Clients who qualify for our assistance are then referred to veterinarians that work with us and we pay the veterinarians directly. We've paid for emergency surgeries, treatments for chronic conditions, tumor removals, dental extractions, broken bones, wounds from dog fights and coyote attacks, infections, intestinal and airway blockages, the list is endless. We also provide funds for vaccinations, flea treatments, microchips, and even transportation to appointments when needed. Importantly, we strive to be non-judgmental regarding how the pet owners we serve came to be in their dire situations, nor do we judge their right to have a pet. Our work is about making sure that every pet gets the care they need because no animal deserves to suffer. Often our clients thank us with tears in their eyes. We know that what we're doing makes a difference. An animal companion can be a lifeline for a destitute person and is often the only being that loves them. So when we save a pet, we save a person too. All donations go directly to pet care and outreach. We have an information table in the fellowship hall today. Come talk with us and pick up a brochure. And when that basket comes around, know that you are a life-changing force in our community. Thank you. Thank you for your help. The ushers will come among you to receive the offering and additional ways for giving are projected on the wall. Please join me in our offering words. This fellowship is the community of ourselves. It is energy and resources are our energy and resources. Its wealth is what we share as we contribute to the life of this community. We affirm it lives. Thank you, ushers.
We set aside time each week to share joys and sorrows. Uh, And we begin by recognizing that our own personal joys and sorrows are only a small part of the greater joys and sorrows of life. We place our first stone this week uh, in honor of International Women's Day. Woohoo! Yeah, um, uh, yeah, that's what we're that's what we're celebrating. Um, And uh, we have a joy to share. Um, that Barbara and Carl Allen's 51st wedding anniversary is today. So cheers to them for their longevity and their happiness together. We place a final stone holding in our hearts all the joys and sorrows that are present here in this room, but unspoken, as well as the ones that we have noted. Thank you. I invite you to settle in for a few moments, some a time for some quiet, some reflection, meditation, prayer, stillness as is your custom. I'll share some words and then we'll have, as I say, some stillness together. We come into the presence of all that is our lives. Here in these moments of calm and quiet and mindful of the spirit of love and life that inhabits every moment. May we remember in these days of the fullness of what we know, how joy becomes twined with sorrow how love brings tears to our eyes, how sweetness can come in such strange guises. The drift of our days lulls us, allows us to forget these things, and sometimes we are startled by the struggle of the ordinary, the difficulty of what is simple. Sometimes we wish for what is easier, what gives us less worry, what offers calm and peace. Help us, spirit of love, to find the meaning that rests within it all, that each of us brings our troubles and failings, our frailties and sorrows. Remind us that love is everlasting, never lost, never gone, always present. Forgiveness is real. Promise always beckons, even in the presence of turmoil and loss. May we remain in the presence of the love that abides always and be awake to what is in our lives this day and every day. 
Let us pause in stillness. So may it be. Amen. Our first reading comes from uh, Annie Dillard, Ann Dillard, uh, not Annie Dillard, Anne Lamott's um, essay called Why I Make Sam Go to Church. And Lamott in this uh, essay um, describes the sub- struggle she has with her son Sam, who's now a totally grown adult with a kid of his own, um, but why she struggled with him to go to church. Sam is the only kid he knows who goes to church, who is made to go to church two or three times a month. He rarely wants to go. This is not exactly true. The truth is he never wants to go. All that matters to him is that he, alone among his colleagues, is forced to spend Sunday mornings in church. You might think, noting the bitterness, the resignation, that he was being made to sit through a six-hour Latin mass. (laughs) Or you might wonder why I make this strapping, exuberant boy come with me most weeks. And if you were to ask, this is what I would say. I make him because I can. I outweigh him by 75 pounds. (laughs) But that's only part of it. The main reason is that I want to give him what I have found in the world, which is to say, a path and a little light to see by. Most of the people I know who have what I want, which is to say purpose, heart, balance, gratitude, joy, are people with a deep sense of spirituality. They are people in community who pray or practice their faith. They are Buddhists, Jews, Christians, people banding together to work on themselves and for human rights. They follow a brighter light than the glimmer of their own candle. They are part of something beautiful. I saw something once from the Jewish Theological Seminary that said, A human life is like a single letter in the alphabet. It can be meaningless, or it can be a part of a great meaning. Our funky little church is filled with people who are working for peace and freedom, who are out there on the streets and inside praying, and they are at home writing letters, and they are at the shelters with giant platters of food. When I was at the end of my rope, the people at St. Andrews tied a knot in it for me and helped me hold on. The church became my home in that old meaning of home, that it's where, when you show up, they have to let you in. They let me in. They even said, y'all come back. You're reading. You're reading, yeah. Sorry. Can we do it? Do you want me to? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's that morning, apparently. A second reading by Donna Ashworth. If every single person who has liked you in your lifetime, you would light up, were to light up on a map. It would create the most glitteringly beautiful network you could imagine. Throw in the strangers you've been kind to, the people you've made laugh or inspired along the way, and that star-bright network of you would be an impressive sight to behold. You're so much more than what you think you are. You have done so much more than you realize. You're trailing a bright pathway that you don't even know about. What a thing. What a thing indeed. 
There end our readings. There is.
So delicious. Thank you, choir. I think every year in my ministry, as we have arrived at this uh, moment for the kickoff sermon for a stewardship campaign or a pledge drive, I think I have suggested in every congregation that I have served, every time I have offered a sermon like this, I have mentioned the Sermon on the Amount. Just in the last few years, I found that a colleague of mine actually put a subtitle to it, and that was the sermon on the amount, I upped mine, up yours. <laughs> and I have to say it's my favorite of the stupid minister jokes that I know. You may not have known that there were stupid minister jokes up, out there, but you know we don't share them all that often, but trust me, there are plenty of them out there. As this is the first time I've been offering such a sermon here, you won't actually know that I never really talk about an amount. Not a percentage, not a dollar amount, none of it. My role in this is to remind you, if you need to be reminded, of what it means to be part of this particular community. Why it is that you get yourself up on this spring forward morning to come to this room. Why is it that you wrestle children through these doors? What is it that brings you here? There are, of course, more answers in this room than uh, there are people. It's so many things. I have always loved Anne Lamott's description of making her son, Sam, go to church. We did the same with our daughter, Claire, and forced her to go, um, grumbling all the way. There's a lot to love about her short answer for why she goes. She wants him to have what she found there, a path and a little light to see by. How do you get those words so perfect and put them together? And don't we all just want to have some of that, some opportunity to find our way in the world? I don't know for certain that it's gotten more difficult to find such a, a thing in these times, but it sure seems like it to me. Can I get an amen for that? Any of you? In some measure, I suspect it isn't that there's more wrong in our world, but that our interconnections have meant that more is revealed to us than might have been the case decades ago and centuries past, certainly. We are so much closer to each other these days, so much connected through devices and Wi-Fi and computers. Last week, I noted that there were um, the number of armed conflicts that there were going on in the Middle East and Africa, somewhere around 100 armed conflicts going um, right now. And I only know that because I can ask Google to tell me how many there are and then find reliable sources to give me that information. Our ability to know is simply um, greater than, um, sorry, our, I don't have the right script here. It's harder for me to read. So let me say again, our ability to simply know what's going on across the globe means it's harder not to know. For those of us who are white, we've been learning so slowly 
for example, also, about what the lives of black, indigenous, and people of color have long been, what kinds of struggles have shaped their lives that most of us who live with white skin have never needed to notice, much less change. And the threats to our democracy look increasingly dire as we move towards no November. Sometimes the level of threat takes my breath away. The possibility of an authoritarian taking charge of our country is real and terrifying. It makes communities and institutions like this one and um, all the more important in the world. It makes it all the more important that we be here in this community because we need a path in times like these and we need a little light to see by. More we need the capacity to ground ourselves. When I can't catch my breath because of my fear of the future, when I get word of another mass shooting, more senseless death, I need community around me. I need to know that there are others who know that grief. I need to have companions as I try to figure out how to make a bit of difference in the great grinding of the world. Can I get an amen? Any of you out there? That Sunday, back after the 2016 election, the sanctuary of the church I served in Tacoma was filled to capacity. I suspect the same here for those of you who were around that Sunday. Everyone, everyone showed up. And then I was surprised that a friend from Olympia and her daughter had driven up. Um, I was living in Olympia at the time, and she came up too. I had seen her some weeks before, and I had said, yeah, I'm getting to church on Sunday morning, half hour neat from Olympia. And so she and her daughter drove up. They needed a word of hope and possibility that morning and trusted that they could get it there. And what I said that morning, what I said was that the work we are called to do hadn't changed at all in light of the election. It was going to be harder, indeed, that was for sure. But what we were called to do and be in the world hadn't changed at all. Browsing through some old notes lately, um, recently my, I came across some words from my colleague Elizabeth Stevens, who serves the UU Church um, in, uh, of the Palouse in Moscow, Idaho. What she said that morning resonates with me and continues to resonate. She said, what keeps coming up for me is this sort of desperate cry. May we stay human. Our illusion of democracy is just one casualty among many, and it's going to get much worse before it gets better. May we serve as protectors and archivists of what is good and kind and real, holding on to the things that we've learned about how to be better humans. May the church be a place where people come to remember who we aspire to be. May we stick together and take care of each other and our neighbors, especially those who are being discriminated against. May we be brave enough to do what's right, even when it isn't safe or easy. The path, a little light to see by. We're only going to need it more going forward. But there's more to it. There's also that light that we bring into the world. I love that image of the glittering trails that we leave in the world, that glowing image of the interdependent web of which we are a part. We need reminders of what abides all the time. We forget too easily the miracle of breath, the necessity of kindness and care, the promise of love in the world. We forget what is in our hands to do to make the world a better place right here where we live and beyond. 
And our annual stewardship campaign enables us to have the resources to do that. You see, this really isn't a sermon on the amount, as I quip year on year. At least it's not the amount of money you can give. It's about the amount of love and care we can create together, the amount of kindness we can show in the world, the amount of support we can offer to making the world a safer, better, wholer place. It's about finding and giving a little light. It's not about prescribing a path, but encouraging each other on the path we've found and offering to support each other to keep making that bright path in the world. In the time for all ages this morning, after I had scolded you, I asked all of you who were willing to partner with one of the kids to help find the light. So let's see, who is willing to help find the light? Okay, all right, all right, that's better, that's better. Even if you hadn't raised your hand before, it's a good thing you raised it now. This is the evidence, my friends, that this fellowship is indeed the community of ourselves. The love, the care, the commitment and resources that we, can, that we bring here can help change the world by changing and supporting us as we make it real. It is in our hands to do so. Amen. We'll sing our closing hymn, We Laugh, We Cry, just verses 1 and 3. Our closing words by Chris Rothbauer. May our lives be reflections of the beauty, peace, and joy that is possible in the world. 
and may the love we find in this place sustain us as we go our separate ways. So may it be with us all. Please join me in the extinguishing words for extinguishing our chalice. We extinguish our flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, the fire of commitment, the power of transformation. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again.